Hi, this is Mark Proctor again. I've recorded another game, this time Space Invaders. It's getting close to the 6.0 time, so I thought it'd be good to include something with a bit of fun and hopefully be a good learning tool. I've split the game up into a number of different sections, and you can go through and run each one one by one to see how the game is built up. Now, it's not the full game, but it's enough just to get you the basics of how the keys move, how you do collision detection. So, without further ado, let's get started. 6.0 introduced this new XML-based configuration because everything is configuration and convention orientated to reduce the amount of code you need to write. So here, um, I'm going to run the last version, the more complete version. I've just selected it for you. I'm going to go to the tab. I'm going to run it. Notice how now I just look it up because the conventions mean you don't have to add resources anymore. And you add it and you run it. The game is very simple. You can move left. You can move right and you can fire missiles and if the missiles collide with the uh, invader it kills it. Simple as that. I'm now going to work on the uh, simplest example and here you can see I highlight invaders 1kb and 1ks. I'm going to run that. I right click it. Run invaders main 1. All this is going to do is going to launch the window and it's going to detect keys as I press them and release them. Look in the bottom left and you can see the X, Z and M as they're pressed and released. There's no graphic display at this point. I'm going to build this up over time. So now let's take a look at the actual rules. So I have a main gain loop. Um, it starts with initialization, inserts the run object which drives the loop. I have main. At this point it's only going to try and fire the keys which I'll come back to in a second. Um, then when the keys are detected you can see them printing out and then the loop makes it force back round with the modify. So here is the keys rule. Notice that was in a different folder. This one will detect when a key is pressed. This one will detect when a key is released. Um, you're wondering where that's coming from now. Look at the uh, game UI. It's loaded there and I'm going to show that to you now and you can see the game UI is where the frame is created and it will bind the key listener to the frame and it will set up streams for uh, the key press stream and the key release stream and you can see those uh, handlers there. Now let's look at the next one, Invaders 2KS. So I'm going to right click and run and this time it's going to open the screen and it's going to see the spaceship. There's nothing else, there's no movement, just the spaceship. So look at the main gain loop. So now we've got the init and we've got a draw. These are two new groups. Have a look at the init. When there is no ship, it creates the ship. If you look at the draw, when you have a ship and you have run, then it's simply going to take the GIF and display it on screen at the given X and Y coordinates. Moving on to the next example, Invaders 3KS. Again, there you can see it's in the kmodule.xml file, the definition for the two folders in which it gets its rules from. I right click, I'm going to run, and it's going to open a screen. And this time we have movements. Notice how it goes all the way off the left and all the way off the right. There's no bounding box. Go back to the main game loop, and we added a new group here, uh, move. If you look at the drawer as well, you can see here, I'm filling the rectangle blank. So that's restoring the background. In this case, it's just black. And you compare that to the previous one, see there's no uh, restoring of the background. Notice it uses the delta X and the delta Y to figure out where it was previously. So now let's look at the move. It recognizes the uh, key pressed, Z and X for left and right and it's going to detect when the key is pressed and when the key is released. Pressing the key doesn't actually change the direction, it sets the delta, the delta x and, um, is going to be plus or minus or zero. When it's a delta, it will move the ship, each time the run loops round in the game loop, it will move the ship, the distance of the delta, if the delta is uh, not equal to zero. Invaders 4KS takes us a little bit further and fixes the bounded box problem. So I'm going to right click and run it, and you'll see the ship, and I can now move left and right, and it stops when it gets to the left and stops when it gets to the right. So that's the bounding box. If you look at the rules. The main game loop hasn't changed. If you look at the rules. We now have more constraints. The controls when the delta x um, takes the x uh, over to the left or over to the right outside the bounding box region.
The uh, at watch there is used to stop recursion, so that when we modify the X, it will not uh, loop back round again. If we open the previous move file and look at the ship move, you can see it doesn't have the constraints there. It's a much simpler rule, so that's why it moves off to the left and off to the right. Now it's time to add some aliens with Invaders 5KS. So there you can see it in the K module file. I'm going to right click and run. It's going to pop up the screen. And this time we've got one, two, three, four, five, six aliens on the screen. And the ship's moving back and forth just like normal. So let's look at the rules. Go to the init. And with the ship, we also now initialize the invader. Look at the from gives one to six as an array, which drives the loop for creating the different alien invaders. And then you can look at the draw and see it's very similar, um, just with a different GIF. You look at the main loop, that hasn't changed. And now for the big finale, invader six KS. So I'm gonna right click and run. Now the ship can move, but it can also farm missiles. And the missiles can kill any of the aliens that it has a collision with. And notice it can also miss. We can only fire one bullet at a time. So let's take a look at the final set of rules that give us this amazing game. So the game loop now adds a bullet. And if you look at the bullet group, it inserts the bullets when the key M is pressed, when there's no bullets. That's important to stop more than one bullet ever being visible at one time. And it will modify the bullet position by the delta y, and it will constantly check every time the y changes um, for a collision. When there is a collision, it will change the alive to false. So I've changed the drawing of the invaders, so there's now both a live and a dead invader. A live invader will draw the GIF, and a dead invader will draw um, a black rectangle based upon whether the invader is dead or alive. And I'm gonna draw the bullet, it simply replaces the previous screen with a black rectangle and its new location with a green rectangle. And we need to detect when it's off screen so that we can both draw the last part of the rectangle, which is black, and then retract it because the bullet doesn't exist anymore. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. The game, as you can see, is only basic at this stage. There's plenty more to add, plenty more fun to be had, but it's enough there to get you the basics of how you have your rules, which are views on data, and you have state changes, which drive um, the, the running of the game and shows how the game loops can be used to simulate uh, games like Space Invaders. Uh, looking forward to your feedback and hopefully user contributions soon.